is the kind of interview I relish. Uh, when our next guest was in just her early, early teens, she found herself in a last chance rehab facility for young people. Before this, she'd been on the streets for two years, abandoned by her mother, victimized and forced into prostitution by a brutal pimp. She was just 12 years old. Her name is Carissa Phelps. She joins us now to tell us about her new book, Runaway Girl, and share her incredible survival story. Uh, one of the most moving books I've read in a long time, Carissa, and I can't believe you're even sitting here. When you read the terrible things that happened to you, you should have been dead some 10 times over, my dear. Well, thank you, Michaela. I mean, thank you for having me here because I think by God's grace, I'm here. I'm here with a message, and I just want to I want to speak for the girls that are still out there on the street. The, the sometimes often invisible ones. Let's start at the beginning because you really kind of had essentially a relatively normal upbringing. Your parents divorced and then a cycle of, of terrible atrocities kind of happened. What was the trigger to all of that? Well, I mean, it, it is. It, it, it's kind of a cycle and people don't see it coming often. But as soon as a child, especially a young girl, a young boy even, is on the streets alone, they're vulnerable to exploitation. They are seen as commodities and they're seen as some, somebody that could be used up. And as 12 years old, you don't have many defenses. So um, it, it happens it happens all too Unfortunately, regularly. Unfortunately, yes, so easily. You found yourself on the streets, literally, at the age of 12. You're still, I, at that age, I was still playing with dolls. And you're on the streets fighting for your life, and you are taken and forced into terrible, terrible, heinous acts. You're forced into prostitution. You were failed by a lot of adults. But at some point, something changed. There was hope, and I see you smiling yes. now. What was it? What was the turning point? Well, there was a counselor at the juvenile facility, at the rehabilitation facility. His name was Ron Jenkins, and he actually grew up in South Central Los Angeles, was part of in foster care himself, and had a mentor himself who changed his life. And he saw me, and he just said, girl, what are you doing here? Like, what's up? What, how'd you get here? And he was the first person to really ask me, how did I get there? Mm -hmm. and then get my story. Up until that point, nobody had really cared to ask you that. Oh, no. They just assumed, you're a bad kid, you're a bad girl, you're making all these choices. And he saw me, and mm. he said, what happened to you? But things did not turn around. You were in and out of more rehabilitation facilities, in, more, in and out of more detention centers. Right. At what point do you feel like your life actually started to make sense to you, that you got on track? Well, I think that's the thing I want to, like, ease people's mind about how change happens. It's not instantaneous. It's definitely, it takes time. It's a few steps forward, maybe a few back, maybe mm -hmm. several back. And mm -hmm. it's not just all an easy uphill road. Um, yes, Ron planted seeds. Yes, Mrs. W., the math teacher, you know, helped me learn algebra by photocopying an algebra book. But it just doesn't all change overnight. I'm still changing. I'm still evolving. I'm still growing. How old are you now? I'm 35. You're 35, but I imagine a lot of healing and, and a fair amount of therapy had to, to be brought to you in order oh, for you even to get to a point in spiritual development, I mean, too. spiritual, because I think it's just by God's grace, truly. Like, I, I remember being a kid on the streets. I remember thinking, I have to get out of here so I could just let people know yeah. that we're here. Well, and that's the thing, shining a light on the invisible. And, and what I want to talk about now is today, you've actually dedicated your life. You're 35 years old, so much life ahead of you. You've dedicated your life to being a motivational speaker, a youth advocate. You're an attorney. Um, that's a lot of strength, my dear, to get to that point. You f I feel as though you want to turn around and, and shine a light on those kids. Yes, I do. And I, I just, I didn't want any doors shut in my face. I didn't want anybody to say, you don't know enough, honey, just go away. And so that's why I did the law degree, the MBA, so that I could speak to the issue, so that I could be knowledgeable about it. And I could give back in a meaningful way and also give hope. Like these young women, I had no idea they were going to see me and my path and then want to be like that. They want to be attorneys. They want to be doctors. They want to go on and, and change their lives in amazing ways, and they are. Yeah, I want to finish with two important things. Right now, sexual trafficking is happening on the streets of L.A. The, the statistics Terrible. are shocking. Terrible. And you're working against that. You're fighting against that here in America. Yes, and, and fighting to just get kids seen as kids that have been victimized instead of arresting them and seeing them like criminals. Mm -hmm. I really just want you know, people to follow. There's, there's the CASE Act that's coming up on the ballot, okay. and that will help us protect young girls and give us more power to protect them. And then last but not least, there's probably either a parent out there with a kid they don't know how to reach, or a kid out there who's saying, 
I'm running. I'm running from everything in my life. Nobody sees me. What would you say to them? I would say take time. That, that kid, if they could just take time to look at an adult who cares for them and to share their story. If they could share their story, if they could say who they are, I know they assume that people know. They just know where all their scars are, but they don't. And the only that way that we can help is if we do know. This book is very difficult to read at times, but it is incredibly inspiring and motivating. It will affect you and impact you. I encourage you to pick it up. Her book is titled Runaway Girl. This is not fiction, my friends. She is a survivor in the truest sense and one of my new heroes. The book is available uh, nationwide and on Amazon.com. Carissa, continue to do great things, my dear. Thank you. Very proud.